Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on Jesus' teaching concerning the day of his return. You will see the sinner is ever desperate to know more than you have to, but that what the Son of God chose not to know is the life-giving truth you need. To that end, I offer as sermon text the Savior's words, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So far the text, let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. Ignorance is bliss. Just up until you find out uh, there's something you don't know. Then it's absolute torture. It was, after all, the devil's first tantalizing temptation uh, to dangle before us the fact that there was something we did not know. Since then, the human soul has struggled with a, with a desperation, can't help but try and find out whatever it is you don't or should not know, and likewise end up in trouble in the process. Like the wild behavior you might see come from children this entire month as their minds swirl about with a frenzy of unknown gifts they're about to receive for Christmas. Well, the sneaking suspicion that your spouse might not be telling you everything, which leads to snooping about a bit to see what it is they've been up to. The frustration of having to wait on others who offer vague promises to come through on their part with, with no good explanation as to what you should concretely expect nor when. All you do know is you're not getting the whole story. This desperation to uncover whatever is supposedly kept secret, it's also the buzz of excitement surrounding conspiracy theories that you have somehow pieced together what's really behind all sorts of moving and shaking in the world, which cannot be perceived by those yet clueless sheep outside the know. Oh, not just on the global stage, it's also the mundane thrill of run-of-the-mill gossip. The momentary power rush of dangling an insider scoop over a friend ravenous for info they have yet to hear. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus' disciples are filled with such a frenzy of curiosity when Jesus informs them that the temple of Jerusalem is soon to collapse, that in fact all things of this world are temporary. This little bit of info, like a drop of blood in a shark tank, leads a few of his disciples to come unto him privately for the insider scoop. Uh, tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Jesus has been teaching out in the open for a good three years now kept not one detail hidden of anything there was to be revealed. Yet these disciples are eager to learn more, as if Jesus is full of secrets. Uh, no, really, you, you can trust us. When, when's it going to happen? But just like any information you happen not to have, even of the final day, Jesus teaches that however tempting it is to think you'd like to know every juicy detail, it is best not to know 
any more than what is open and public for all to hear. Each of Jesus' responses to, to their curiosity and suspicion, absolute torture to the ears of any good gossip hunter. He says, take heed that ye be not deceived. In other words, stick only to what you can know for certain. Go not forth, don't go down that trail. And believe it not, no matter how adamantly another sinner demands their spiritual gossip is gospel truth, treat it as if you'd never heard it in the first place. And then, the absolute most annoying words to hear when you're digging for a big scoop, no man knoweth, no, not the angels, neither the sun. How aggravating it must have been to hear, I don't even know. He has to be lying. Except now, they're the ones telling tales about the Son of God. The sinner's relentless search for just a little extra info is an itch never fully scratched. Why, it's terrifying to stop and ponder just how much of our day-to-day -day conversational knowledge base is made up of guesses at best, revealing the true irony of our desperate search for more, that it's our fear of being left in the dark which is the root cause, the main driver of our collective darkness. All the stories you hear or make up in your own mind about the world, those in your life, even about yourself, no matter how adamantly you demand they are true, if they are not in the Bible, there is no way they can be untainted by sin which means on our own, you and I are incapable of operating in 100% reality. Now this kind of ignorance, this should truly be torturous, which is why the only thing you truly need to know is what the Son of God came to give which means beginning with pondering how Jesus, so different from you and me, begins by pondering his complete contentment, Jesus' bliss with ignorance, with not knowing a thing. No one knows not even me. How could this be? The Apostle John calls Jesus the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The omniscient, all-knowing God become man. And all this great I am has to offer is a big I don't know. This is the mystery the incomprehensible love of Jesus' humility. That the Son of God set his divine authority and power to the side in order to come and live a life just like yours. From childhood on, Jesus explored and discovered, learning as he went, ever content with each bit of info, receiving it sufficient as is. Jesus asked questions of those he spent time with, genuinely discovering both the sorrows and joys of each soul he encountered. 
and he took people at their word. Forgiving repentant sinners without a second thought. And if Jesus heard one of those stories anyone would know or suspect, well, in best construction, he took it to heart as but further evidence of our complete ignorance concerning what is true or not, that for which he had come to suffer and die. You see, even what Jesus did not know is all part of his righteousness. His ignorance being true bliss, because what Jesus chose not to know what he cared not to think more about than he should have was all for your eternal good. In our lesson today, the Son of God is left in the dark, so to speak, concerning the day and hour in which everything he came to accomplish, do, and be would be fulfilled for every soul, living and dead, to see. You and I would find this intolerable. Why get up and do any of it? Because Jesus needed no more explanation than that which his Father had to offer in his word. For in everything that Jesus, in his humility, did not know, Jesus suffered no ignorance concerning what lay ahead for him. He found all that in the Bible. That he alone in all human history was the only man born of a virgin? That meant he was also the fulfillment of the life-giving truth God first revealed to Adam and Eve in order to break the delusion of their false reality, having fallen into sin that he was the promised seed come to crush the serpent's head. As repeated by Moses, that he was the prophet come to put an end to God's rightful wrath against our iniquity, and is penned by David, that this would take losing everything he did have, in a suffering so severe, it would leave Jesus only with questions. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When on a cross, he who had known neither hurt nor harm his whole life through, up until the moment of his arrest, endured the true torture you and I deserve. Leaving his every divine perspective and privilege to the side, Jesus chose to know instead each of your sins. Not in a foreknowledge from heaven above, which could only make him angry, but know them and your condition so deeply and personally that having paid the price in full, he could only choose to know these your sins no more. Forget them all and invite you into eternal life as if not a one of them ever happened. Oh, for every question of life which leaves you in the dark, consider yourself blessed to be on the short list of this insider scoop, his life-giving word. The scriptures do not reveal everything you want to know, not to our standing, but everything contained in that inerrant word is more than sufficient. Even for everything Jesus chose not to know in his earthly ministry, he held back not one word concerning this your redemption from sin, death, and hell. As he confessed in his own trial, I spake openly to the world, and in secret have I said nothing. 
meaning everything recorded by the prophets and the apostles concerning our spiritual darkness and the forgiveness found in his blessed name is everything you need to carry you through this life into the next. As the apostle explains, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The less you know, the less you know of anything else, the better. Since anything not found in the Bible is a guess at best, it is most certainly best to stick to what you do know for certain. That each time you become fascinated with all sorts of things you shouldn't be, you might shake it out of your head and say like Jesus, I really do not know. Don't know a thing other than this, that Christ Jesus died and rose again for me. Ignorance is bliss after all, then a bliss which can be yours in every matter of life through repentance and faith. As you reflect this spiritual bliss in your life by using your lips to cover the faults and weaknesses of others, by refusing to hear gossip in the first place yourself, and by treating others as if, as if you know none of their sins, as if you remember not one of the things they've done to you. Finding peace instead by sharing with others these life-giving truths you can know for certain. As Jesus commissioned, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That by setting aside every tall tale of what's going on in this world or your neighbor's life, repenting of each dark tale you tell yourself, you might have it all wiped clean by the divine ignorance and innocence Jesus has to offer as he comes to you through word and sacrament. Why to be so strengthened in faith, to be so focused solely on what God has to reveal in his holy word. Now this is the real insider scoop of everything to be revealed the day of Christ's return. For though the disciples might have found Jesus' explanation a touch lacking, no man knoweth, not even me, it actually spoke volumes. That all you need to know is he's coming soon. At which point your bliss will be eternal. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.